Hi, I'm Sarah SDX, author of DontCookYourBowls.com, a lighthearted guide to male fertility. I've decided to travel far and wide to seek out the top experts in the field to find out what causes male infertility and more importantly, what can be done about it. my way to Palo Alto, California to meet with Dr. Eisenberg. He's the medical director of male reproductive medicine and surgery at Stanford University. I'm so excited to meet with Dr. Eisenberg. I was thinking in the car, one of the things I want to ask him is about all these lifestyle changes I've been reading about. Things like boxers versus briefs or smoking or alcohol or um, another one. Cell phones. Can, do these things actually affect sperm count or are they just wives tales or urban legends? I'm going to ask him. Alright, well, I am here with um, Dr. Michael Eisenberg, Director of uh, Male Reproductive Medicine and Surgery at Stanford. Talk a little bit about just lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. I know that when I was going to get ready to have children, mm -hmm. there were a lot of things I started doing, taking vitamins mm -hmm. and making sure that I didn't drink too much and all these things because I was concerned about uh, about my fertility. Mm -hmm. How what um, what can men do uh, to kind of play their role, play their part in being in increasing their fertility and the lifestyle? Yeah, so that's it's really been a big. Um, it's kind of been a big push towards that. So what are men doing potentially that's bad and what we can do to sort of improve things. So again, you know, my general rule of thumb, anything that's good for the heart will be good for fertility. So certainly exercise is shown to be very important and, you know, being physically active. So if you kind of compare across segments, you know, men that are a little more sedentary have lower sperm counts, men that are a little more active have higher sperm counts. Now certainly, you know, activity at the extremes can be bad. So if you look at like marathon runners or professional cyclists, people that really like exercise professionally to exhaustion that too much can probably be bad so um, you know it's possible to overdo it but in general you know exercising you know vigorously for 30 minutes an hour every day that's going to be better than it is harmful and you know there have also been studies looking at college age you know boys again seeing sort of the same correlation where you know more sort of strenuous or physical activity is beneficial where more television watching turns out to be bad so sedentary lifestyle uh, is harmful um, the other thing that's also important is diet. So, um, you know, diets higher in saturated fats, um, you know, kind of more processed foods, more of the so-called American diet is shown to be poor uh, for sperm quality, but, you know, things that are rich in, you know, whole grains, um, you know, fruits, vegetables, those have shown to be beneficial. So I think that, again, you can kind of try and tailor your diet a little bit just to optimize fertility. Now, it's important to know that none of these things are going to be probably the whole story. So you know, even the, the largest differences between a poor diet and a, and a good diet are not, um, you know, tenfold improvements in sperm production. But, you know, I think all these things sort of accumulate together and can make, make a big difference. So I think those are important. Um, now the other thing is weight. So certainly, you know, there's an obesity epidemic in this country and really the world. And that has been shown to be very uh, influential in terms of uh, uh, sperm production. So what we know is that, you know, men that are compared to normal weight, men that are overweight, obese, severely obese, or very severely obese, have much higher rates of low sperm counts or even no sperm counts. Also poor sperm movement, poor sperm quality, all those together um, shown to be very um, you know, you know, strong correlation. So as much as possible, maintaining, again, a, an ideal, a healthy body weight uh, certainly benefits your heart and will definitely benefit fertility as well. Great. So when you're online uh, researching mm -hmm. fertility, there's all kinds of stuff that comes up. Boxers mm -hmm. and cell phones mm -hmm. and all these things, plastic bottles. Do these things really impact your fertility? Are they just wives' tale? Are they, you know, urban legends? What um, are there any truth to these things? Yeah, the age-old question of boxers versus briefs. You know, in general, anything that warms up the scrotum can be bad. That's definitely true. But you know, whether boxers or briefs are actually going to do that, or sorry, I guess whether briefs are going to do that more than boxers is, you know, sort of an, um, 
it's been well researched and probably not the case. So obviously most men don't just walk around in underwear and nothing else. You know, they have underwear and pants, maybe some other layers in there as well. So it's unlikely any one layer is going to make a big difference. So in general, most of the studies have not borne out that there's any difference between boxers and briefs. So whatever, you know, man is comfortable with, I tell them to continue to wear. And certainly some men say that they feel like they're getting a little hotter down there. So yeah, I mean, it's reasonable to try and change to maybe a, a less, um, tight brand of underwear, uh, style of underwear, but it's unlikely that's going to make a huge, huge difference. Okay, okay. But he um, also asked, well, sorry to cut you off, but he also asked about cell phones. So those are also been, um, you know, it's a big question with those and also laptops. So again, you know, the testicles are below the body and they need to be a little cooler than the body. And so we do worry about heat exposure. Um, so laptops, certainly laptops in the lab can really powerfully warm up the scrotum and it probably takes about one degree change to um, profoundly impact sperm production. And having a laptop in your lap, you know, laptops get pretty warm. You know, some of the solid state, solid state drives now um, tend to probably get a little less hot than some of the older uh, models, but still they can get warm and it doesn't take a lot, again, to warm up the scrotum. So I think that's very important to know. Even having a, you know, a pillow in your lap, things like that, that can still, you can protect it, but your, t your scrotum actually probably le in less than an hour can reach kind of that critical one degree threshold. So I think that's something that men should really try and avoid um, during this time. And then also the other concern is sort of Wi-Fi exposure and all these other kind of uh, you know, radio frequency waves that we're exposed to as well. And there's some data that suggests that you know, this exposure, whether it be from a laptop computer or from even a cell phone, uh, can powerfully influence sperm production. So these are, these are kind of um, experiments that are done, uh, you know, probably not in the most uh, you know, physiologic way. So basically what was done, if you can believe it, as men uh, were asked to ejaculate in a cup, they split the cup into two samples, and then one was exposed to a laptop or a cell phone, and one was just left. And so at an hour, they basically compared sperm parameters between these two, um, you know, these two samples, one that was exposed and one that was not. And it turns out the one that was exposed had, you know, lower rates of movement, higher rates of DNA damage. So all these things are kind of suggestive. Now, obviously, that's a very unphysiologic test because, you know, you're your um, sperm is inside you, so whether it's actually going to be exposed to these same levels is sort of uncertain, but it's all sort of suggestive. So I think, again, when you're kind of looking at all these together, probably any one individual is not going to make a huge difference, but together they may, they may be impactful. So I think it's just something you can do just to be safe. Try and separate yourself as much as possible from, you know, from your laptop or, you know, also just be a little more mindful of the cell phone as well. Okay, so getting up, taking breaks, mm -hmm. keeping things stored a little bit further away from family jewels, those kinds yes, of things. Yes, exactly. <laughs> kind of keep, keep the boys safe. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, are there other things that, you know, that are um, kind of good tips just beyond that? Well, the other thing that um, is thought to be beneficial for male fertility is antioxidants. So certainly this is, you know, also very hot right now. Um, a lot of people have, you know, different products on the market. So people looked at a lot of different antioxidants and how they benefit, you know, fertility in general, also, you know, different semen parameters. So people have looked at vitamin E, vitamin C, L-carnitine, zinc, coenzyme Q. Um, it's getting a lot of press right now. And there are some studies that do show benefit. Um, there's actually, you know, large ongoing studies now to really look at this in a very kind of structured and rigorous manner. Um, but I think that in general, you know, at reasonable doses, none of these are going to be harmful, and there is some evidence that they can be beneficial. So both for, you know, couples trying naturally, even couples trying with, you know, um, technologies doing inseminations or even doing in vitro fertilization. So I think it's reasonable. I usually recommend my men do start one of these tablets. I don't have any, you know, particular loyalty to any special male fertility blend or any brands, but I think that, you know, most multivitamins or some antioxidants of some form I think can be beneficial. Okay, so let's let's um, try to summarize this. That one, uh, you should eat eat well mm -hmm. and exercise. Uh, lose weight if you're overweight, mm -hmm. and don't cook your balls, <laughs> and take your vitamins, mm -hmm. and watch where you put yourself on your laptop. Yes. All right. Hi, I've been looking for a way to summarize everything that Dr. Eisenberg said, and I came up with this. If you want to boost your fertility, you need to take a shot. Yeah, right. We all wish. No, SHOT is an acronym I came up with that stands for the leading things in our lives that can contribute to low sperm counts and infertility in men. It stands for stress, heat, obesity, and toxins. These are the four leading things in our life that can contribute and studies have shown to, to depress sperm counts. 
So stress, find ways to relax, get out, exercise, do things you love. Uh, heat, don't cook your balls. Make sure you're just mindful of the temperature down there. Obesity, lose extra weight. I know this is tough, but obesity uh, contributes to low sperm counts in a couple of ways. First, it um, increases estrogen levels by uh, increasing aromatase activity, and then it also uh, acts as a blanket and overheats the scrotum. Finally, toxins. Uh, these are things in our everyday lives that can uh, kill sperm or hurt them. That includes uh, certain prescription medications, antibiotics, so check, what, check your medications, make sure they're safe. Um, drugs, uh, marijuana, cocaine, uh, alcohol, smoking, um, and then pesticides and uh, hazardous uh, heavy metals like lead and, and arsenic. Uh, so if you're in a job that has environmental toxins, uh, try to take extra precaution there. Uh, Dr. Eisenberg has agreed to be a wonderful resource, so if you have questions, if this has brought up any questions for you, I've included his contact information below. Go ahead and reach out to him. Uh, he's a wonderful, wonderful resource. And also, um, if there's other information, go ahead and check out our website, www.don'tcookyourballs.com. We have a wealth of information there. Uh, much more than we could get into in these movies. I'm going to be continuing on my road trip, uh, road show, interviewing more doctors and bringing you the latest information on how to boost your fertility. But until then, here to you and to making babies. Oh, this is awful. Just stick to not cooking your balls. Thanks. See you next time.